I didn't now. know there was a company. Yeah, it's the Myers Briggs company. But how so, do they get money? So, what are some of your weaknesses? Uh, <laughs> okay, so this means that I'm more prone to depression, and so it yeah, so manifests get itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. So no, exactly. That's a good point. Do you think that's like true? That's valid. I'm with Frank James. He's a fellow YouTuber, expert on personality types, MBIT or MBTI to Myers Briggs type indicator. Yeah. Okay. How'd you get into that? Uh, it's kind of by accident. I just had um, uh, my brother told me about it one day. He was like talking about it with some friends, and uh, he was like, "Hey, man, you know, we think you're this personality type." And I'm like, "Okay, cool." Uh, I, it was in the back of my mind for a few months, and then I uh, eventually took the test, and I got the same type that they said that I was. So I was like, "Oh my gosh, this must mean something." So how did they know what you were? They were just guessing, you know. And I mean, I, you know, the type is INFJ, which come, I come to find out is like the type that a lot of people get on the test anyway. So uh, it is. Yeah, I mean, if you... It's because like, it's like attributes that they want to be. Yeah, it's kind of like if you, if you answer the test right, you get um, INFJ, or you get NF something. It's mostly genetic. It's like finite. It's like in your brain. Yeah, well, so the actual psych, uh, psychological studies are kind of still out on that. And obviously, Myers-Briggs isn't scientific. And I know people in the comments are going to be like... <laughs> It'd be tell you pseudoscience, like, yeah, okay, you got me. <laughs> or they'll be like, you know. It's kind of in the same realm as astrology. Yeah, and, you'll, yeah. yeah people, yeah, I know, you guys are going to say <laughs> MBTI is astrology for smart people. Okay, <laughs> touche. But uh, like w real, the, the hard science psychology, they're even not sure. I think it's sort of like, you know, we think it's 50% genetic, 50% environmental. It's sort of like you have all the genes for your personality and then certain things in your environment either activate it or not. It's like you might have the gene for a certain disease, but you never get that disease, but you have the gene for right. it. But maybe something, someone else could have the same gene and environmentally it gets activated for them to have that disease. I think it's kind of the same for personality. Okay. But uh, yeah, ultimately I think it's, you're kind of born with a general personality that then gets kind of more defined as time goes on. You're an ISTJ. Uh, no, INFJ, yeah. Do you know what celebrities are INFJs? Uh, that are supposed to be kind of like you? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, a real, well, a real good basic example of an INFJ that a lot of people outside of um, uh, England might not, or the UK might not know about, is Darren Brown, who's like a... Magician. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, he, on Netflix, he has a lot of uh, specials where he's basically like trying to run a psychological experiment where he's getting people to do certain things. So it's all about how, what are the patterns of human behavior and how do we influence that? And it's a very, uh, that's like a stereotypical kind of INFJ and he is a perfect celebrity example of one if you want to like really download what that personality type is like. Mm. Uh, but there are other INFJ celebrities that might not seem as stereotypical, like uh, Jimmy Fallon is an INFJ, um, mm. Aziz Ansari is an INFJ, and it's like all these people might not seem the same, but if you like look at the, the pattern of the, uh, when, when they're speaking, they will give away these patterns of looking at mostly the intuition and they're trying to like narrow things down and they're really aware of feelings and they're aware of the spectrum of feelings. And then we use all these different clues to say, oh, INFJ. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you INFP or ISFP? I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, it's, it makes it, sense. The for N an IP, the S, it's yeah. very, it'll be balanced for that type. Right. Um, I, w I thought... I think I'm an ISFP. Okay. Placebo, I feel like it's, you know, when you read about yourself as an ISFP, it kind of, um, it can be problematic that way, and you're like, okay, so this means that I'm more prone to depression, and so it yeah, so manifests let me get itself, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, whatever. So No, exactly, that's a good point. Do you think that's, like, true, that's valid, and that's where it could be problematic? Yeah, I think, well, yeah, I think people have to be really careful with personality types. Self-identifying, yeah. Yeah, you have to, like, for me, 
I think the purpose is to figure out what you are doing that you don't realize you're doing so that you can grow as a person. So theoretically, if you uh, find out your true personality type, you'll be like, okay, there's the, I keep looking at the world this way and I keep interacting with the world and other people this way, which I, didn't ma I maybe didn't realize I was doing. Hmm. And that's kind of sending me in this cycle of pain and fear. And maybe if I realize that, I can kind of go against it. I can realize what my um, you know, weaknesses are and work on those. But I think there are a lot of people who are just like, yeah, yeah. I'm this type now. I'm, uh, I'm gonna just embrace that and my Mike, weakness. So I'm lazy today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they'll be like, I'm INFP, so I can't organize my closet. So right. can you yourself tell, just by looking at someone's face without hearing them talk or anything, what they are? Maybe. Yeah, that's an interesting thing, and that's yeah. something that I have. Like, I'm still learning that part of it, but there are definite like physical features where it's like, okay, this person might be this type because that type kind of looks like that. Or pe yeah. people who look like that are kind of that like type. Like Neanderthal looking people <laughs> are kind of like TJs, right? <laughs> and uh, like, I have like soft features, so I'm an FP. Yeah, well, I mean, kind of it, it can be stuff. Well, I'm trying to think of, well, the most basic example is uh, there's a, an FE smile versus an FI smile. And those are two different kinds of feelings. So. Mm -hmm. FJ and TP types have FE, so they supposedly have this like big Hollywood kind of grin, whereas FP and TJ types have an FI smile, which is maybe more authentic looking, but is maybe not as, you know, uh, <laughs> glitzy and, uh, you know, right. huge. You F know? You're saying FI. FI stands for introverted feeling. So that's, so that's me. Yeah. And I have kind of a, so I have a kind of a faker smile? No, yours would be more authentic, oh, but okay. like maybe not as big. So the FEs, the FJ types. Or more automatic smiles. Would be, more, yeah, because it's like, <laughs> they have to, uh, com like theoretically, they want to communicate emotion outwardly. It doesn't matter if they feel it or not. So it's like, let me just have the biggest, dumbest, most expressive looking smile mm. so that I can get across to people, hey, I'm happy. Whereas FI is like, I feel what I feel. It doesn't really matter. Mm. Um, so I'm going to smile when I want to. And I don't need to communicate to you my emotion. Yeah, and like also dopamine. Some people, you can, you can tell there's like a bunch of energy coming out of their face. Yeah. Can you kind of tell that? Yeah. I mean, in general, if you look at feelers versus thinkers, the feelers will tend to have more of that emotional energy. Like they're trying to... Uh, you know, they communicate with emotion. They're more artistic. Yeah, well, generally, yeah. Um, there, I, there are definitely thinkers who are artistic as well. Um, I think, you know, that's the thing is it's all stereotypes. So right. you'll jump to a conclusion. Well, you know, for like, for instance, Ed Sheeran, you would think maybe at first he's an ISFP or INFP or something. But when you really listen to what he's saying, it's like, oh, he's really more like a, uh, ESTJ, which isn't a stereotypically uh, right. artistic. What makes you say Ed Sheeran is ESTJ? Well, one of the big things that, that anyone could probably pick up if you're listening to his interviews, and it's been a while since I was really doing a deep dive on him, but it's like he's always talking about other people, which EJs t tend to do, and he's always talking about how he feels kind of insecure. He's like, uh, that's a very big, like a lot of his language is very EJ. I'm insecure about what everyone else is thinking because I'm the, you know, uh, I can't rely on myself. I have to have the support of others kind of thing. Because EJs are very other people focused, so it's hard for them to go with their own decisions. They, they worry about if I do this thing, everyone else is going to judge me for it. I mean... You're saying they worry about that more than the... Uh, Theoretically, uh, right. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone worries about it, but it's yeah. like, it, it's not going to be everyone's life problem that they talk about. If you interview 100 people, all of them are, are going to dislike judgment from other people, right? right yeah. But only some types are going to talk about it a lot. Like, if you get them talking for an hour, hmm. 45 minutes into that hour, the EJs and the IPs also, they'll still be like talking about people and judgments and decisions and stuff, whereas the IJs and the EPs, they will 
kind of have moved away from that and talk about like things and systems and control and things like that. Has anyone chewed you out pretty bad in the comments? I mean, oh, yeah. obviously, but uh, has anyone, what's the main rebuttal that you get? That it's, just, yeah, that it's pseudoscience, whatever. Yeah. That it's well, hogwash. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, and the worst comments are on other people's channels, so I look forward to reading the comments on this video. <laughs> yeah. my, I mean, my comment section is usually pretty uh, positive, but yeah, people are like, "Oh, this is pseudoscience." What it, you know? There's no. What's your main? What's your main rebuttal? Yeah, to that. To them? Well, I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, I can't rebut that it is pseudoscience, but I can say that. Just because something isn't scientific doesn't mean that there isn't some kind of value there and that there isn't something that could be discovered scientifically or proven scientifically at some point. Yeah. And a lot of the problem is that like the Myers-Briggs company, the official Myers-Briggs, doesn't have interest in making it scientific. Like they're fine making money the way oh, they I, are I didn't now. know there was a company. Yeah, it's the Myers-Briggs company. But how so, do they get money? Uh, corporate personality tests. Well, also, you have to pay for the official Myers-Briggs wow. test. Yeah. So they're making boatloads of money okay. going to companies and saying, hey, let's administer this test. Let's get all your employees typed, wow. et cetera. Yeah. So um, it's kind of religious in a way. You could look at it that way, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, or, yeah, it reminds me of Scientology and their... their um, well, yeah. I mean, it's I w called. <laughs> What's that thing called? The meter something. But no, sorry, yeah. Yeah, you lost a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, so, yeah, it was, it was made by two women in, like, the 20s or something? Yeah, I forget exactly the timeline, but, yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. mother-daughter team. The mother basically was obsessed with personality types and used the daughter and her friends kind of as test subjects to figure out what their personality types were. And she was very influenced by Carl Jung and the psychological types that I mentioned earlier. Right. Um, so she basically developed and refined the theory he started with. And yes, yeah, sh she and her daughter uh, developed the whole system and hmm. the test. And it just kind of grew from there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly sure at what point it became this huge corporation. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it has changed a lot over time. I think it originally started with a much more like the focus was all just on like let's figure out personality and now the folk i mean not not to slander yeah. the myers-briggs company here they do great work they do a lot of studies and yeah, stuff yeah 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 but uh i think obviously the main focus is how do we keep it going as a company right yeah um and but the value is kind of like do, like do you believe in astrology and no 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 that's that stuff is weird that is pseudoscience <laughs> so yeah, I definitely believe in this a lot more than astrology. Yeah. This makes sense to me a lot more than astrology. Yeah, well, I mean, the other, the basic thing is astrology is like you were born under these conditions, so you are like this. Planets, stars. Yeah, yeah. whereas Myers-Briggs is saying, okay, we're observing these patterns within you, which we would describe as this. Right. So that's kind of so the difference It's like there. way more scientific. It's very, much more scientific. <laughs> there's, you know. And this is how you can improve, whatever. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing is like at the, that would be the other rebuttal is like, okay, maybe it's not scientific, but if people are able to use it to learn about themselves and improve their life and in, in a healthy perhaps, way, yeah, yeah and perhaps in a more important sense, if they are able to learn about other people and get along better with other people by understanding personality types, that's a, uh, that's a net positive, that, whether right. it's pseudoscience or not so antidepressants they can change personalities you know I don't know that it would I would go so far as to say that they change your your like type I think well the other th I mean that's a big discussion yeah. of the relation between personality and uh, you know disorders. pharmaceuticals yeah yeah well and and pharmaceuticals and yeah. yeah and mental illness right yeah because I would because I think a lot of people think that certain types have certain mental illnesses or they will be more predisposed to it. And it's like maybe there is some clustering of certain disorders with certain types, but I don't know, I don't know if your type necessarily sets you up for it. Mm. And so then, the, uh, yeah, so with pharmaceuticals, I think maybe 
it allows you to be more of yourself. I think if anything, a mental illness or a disorder is going to cloud and change who you are and then the drug would get you closer to being yourself assuming it was prescribed correctly and everything right. and that it worked for you yeah that reminds me of that quote like money doesn't like more money makes a guy reveal himself more mm -hmm. so in that way yeah. you know yeah and of course you know people can have the same personality and one person uh just gets it goes in a bad direction one person goes in a good direction it's like a lot of it just has to do with are you willing to face your uh your dark side your weaknesses and overcome it or are you just gonna like ignore it and let that take over your life because that's that's the whole basis of the theory is that your weaknesses comprise or compose a lot of darkness in your life mm. that you're ignoring and you can't just keep it away forever, so it will eventually manifest in a way that kind of like takes over uh, everything. Yeah, how do you know? So what are some of your weaknesses? Uh, <laughs> like <laughs> physical reality. Like, um, the, I mean, the thing with my type, a lot of- Like you disassociate a lot or? No, like literally, uh, <laughs> I will freak out if something goes wrong with the computer or the camera or whatever. It's okay. like, or it's like a struggle to have to deal with, um, in a more abstract sense, like it's more, it's difficult to deal with like new information, like facts that come in that go against the pattern that I've already established you don't like spont spontaneity? Spontaneity is, yeah. is very difficult. Um, okay. Like there's just like a lot of anxiety surrounding things that are out of my control. Now, of course, like anyone doesn't like things out of their control, but if you interview 100 people, how many people are gonna focus on the anxiety they feel about that? That's, yeah. that's really what personality stuff is looking at. Um, anything else you want me to ask or any f last words? Um, not, not that I can think of. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot to be like... An intro? <laughs> yeah, I forgot to... This? Yeah, no, well, I, I mean... Hey, I'm Andrew Hales. Welcome to another edition of Chatting With. Today I'm here with Frank James. He's a YouTuber, uh, expert on personality types, MBTI. Um, we're here in D.C. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I think I kind of want to have that at the very end anyway. <laughs> Just to be funny. I don't know. Oh, yeah, check out Shop Loft. We got the Bonnie Tees going on. Bonnie Hats. Uh, do you check out, yeah, check out Frank's channel. Uh, Frank James, it's just his name. Uh, I'll, it'll be the first link in the description. Um, let us know what your personality type is. That was that like button and gasoline and light it on fire, goats.